Hey guys, this is Vijay Gautam. I am host of the podcast called The Inspiring Talk, a podcast mentor and co-founder of a podcast production company, WYN Studio. I'm based in Delhi. Uh, so good to be here with Anuz and Deepika. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you so much, Vijay, for your uh, like for your time, for your precious time. It's it's an absolute pleasure to be talking to you in our podcast. Thank you so much for your time. No, it's an absolute honor to be on your show. Um, you know, I keep seeing the post of you both and I love the way you guys, you know, put the, the kind of love and uh, kind of work that you put in, you know, producing this podcast out and uh, all the good work that you are doing. So I've been following for a while. Uh, it's, it's just so awesome and so glad to be here. So I'm based in Delhi. Um, I'm originally from Nepal, where you guys are also from. So I'm based in Delhi. Uh, I have been here for almost nine years now. Wow, it's already been nine years. So, yeah. Nine years. And how are you holding up with this uh, lockdown, uh, especially in India? Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's a, I mean, for me, it, I, I would say it hasn't affected a lot. And I think a lot of people are, you know, wanting to say, hey, you know what, I want to go out, I want to do this and stuff. Uh, but for me, I'm really not, uh, I haven't, you know, felt anything per se until the last, I would say, you know, few days because uh, I normally am not such an outgoing person. I don't have to go out and do all of this stuff. I'm quite happy being on my, uh, you know, work table and doing my stuff. So uh, for the majority of the part of this entire lockdown situation, I have never thought even once for saying that, you know what, I wish I could go out. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. But uh, I'm happy being on my table and I've never been as productive as, you know, I have been in the past a uh, couple of months so it's uh, it's just uh, yeah great you run uh, and produce your podcast the inspiring talk which is one of the most downloaded or listened podcast right now in india whenever we, uh, we google a top 10 podcast in india your in, the inspiring talk all, uh, talk always comes you know under 10 which is really good and and the and the interesting thing is you started your podcast just like fairly uh, 3 years ago in 2017 right how come you just skyrocketed? <laughs> so I think, um, uh, so even if I started in 2017, uh, you know, podcasting in the U.S. by then was already raised a lot of people in Europe and U.S. was doing a lot of podcasts and creating a ton of them. But in India, it was uh, you know, fairly a new idea when I started in 2017. Not so many podcasters were there and uh, mine was uh, possibly one of the very, very few and first podcast on personal transformation. That's the topic of my podcast where I chat with people about their uh, journey and get valuable insights for my listener on their life and the personal transformation. So it was probably one of the, you know, early, uh, you know, podcasts that I did on that topic. And there was definitely need for that content when I started uh, in 2017. And, uh, you know, personal transformation or self-help is a genre in itself. You know, it's, uh, it attracts a lot of people and that's um, that gets a lot of audience, but I think I would say, you know, I had that uh, advantage of being an early mover. Um, yeah. So because, um, you know, the audience kept growing and there was not so many options out there for people. And when they saw, okay, here's some guy who is doing the inspiring talk podcast. And I think, uh, and eventually, you know, I think I got better at, uh, whether interviewing people or whether getting the right kind of guest or, um, and, uh, you know, asking right questions and, you know, just getting constant feedback from the audience saying that, Hey, you know, what would you like to hear more? And every time somebody sent me a message saying that, Hey, BJ, I love your podcast. And I go, thank you so much, but here's a quick form. Can you quickly let me know, um, you know, what do you like, what you'd like to hear more and, uh, you know, any feedback that you have for the show. So I think, yeah, I mean, I, I, you can say, you know, uh, because I was an early mover, uh, that's how I think I would say, you know, I was able to get uh, listeners, the kind of listeners that I have at the moment. When you initially um, set out on the journey of podcasting with the Inspiring Talk, how easy was it to approach the guests that you wanted to interview in the podcast? Maybe difficult is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, I mean, it was a lot of learning and, uh, you know, a lot of um, uh, trying and, you know, a, a lot of experience. Um, a lot of experimentation with uh, different ways to reach out to the guests. So, um, uh, but having said that, I think uh, one of the biggest realizations that I have, have right now is as a podcaster, we try to limit ourselves 
already, you know, um, telling ourselves on our head saying that, oh, this guy anyways is going to say no. So I don't bother sending that email. So that's, I think, is the biggest, biggest lesson for me saying that, hey, you know what, even if you feel that the person might not uh, you know, get back to you, send that email anyways. So see how it goes, you know, reach out to the person anyways, and you don't know, you never know if that person's going to come back. So I think that's the biggest lesson that I had. But when I was starting out in the beginning, so I literally started by going on my Facebook. And uh, I think I had 1000 people on my Facebook list and made the list of, I mean, I just said, okay, let me go through this 1000 people list on my Facebook and see how many people are uh, on my list, whom I can possibly interview on my podcast. And I think I came out with five names out of the thousand lists saying that, okay, these are the five people whom I can interview on my podcast. So that's the list that I started out. And after that, um, I reached out through, uh, you know, email and stuff. But again, the interesting thing here is because podcast was new in India. So when I told them, Hey, you know what, this is one of the very, you know, few podcasts and personal transformation in India. And my, a lot of my guests who were based in India, whom I interviewed, they have never been interviewed on the podcast. So that also kept them saying that, wow, this looks like a new medium and I want to jump on and, you know, I want to be guest on the show. So I think that also helped a lot in getting the initial set of guests uh, for my podcast, but to get like really, really popular guests on the show, uh, I think it's a, it's a, you know, constant learning and understanding of, hey, how can I add value to the guest life? And hey, how can I, uh, you know, ensure that what they truly believe in is something that I can, you know, go and pitch to them and saying that, hey, you know what, this is exactly what I'm trying to do. And this is something that you deeply care about. And then, you know, making that match between what they deeply care and, uh, and, you know, what I'm trying to do here at the show. So I think that is one of the, uh, one of the great, great lessons that I have had, uh, you know, when it comes to having the guests on the podcast. Vijay, I remember listening to one of your episodes where you described one incident where you recorded yourself as if you were a BBC news anchor, and then you played that tape to one of your teachers and your teacher thought it was actually the anchor from BBC. So, uh, in a sense, you always wanted to be a, a radio journalist, a radio anchor, but you really never thought of pursuing it as a career, right? I was a fan of the way BBC would bring the news, and I know uh, you you guys know Surendra Fuyal, right? And the way he would raise the news, and I, I don't know if I can use, uh, you know, um, uh, your audience would understand, but there, there's a particular way that he would say, yo, BBC Nepali Shawaho. So this is, this is used to be the you know, kind of a tone that he would use. And then I would read the news on the same way. And I would even say that, you know, this is Surendra Puyal and whatever. And, and, and then I recorded it on my phone and I was in Kathmandu, um, you know, at my hostel, I was preparing for my college entrance. And, um, you know, I just picked the newspaper. I just read the news and went to the hospital ward and saying that, hey, why don't you go and uh, listen to the news? It's just BBC news. And he just goes and keeps listening for more than two minutes. And I'm like, what, what are you listening? And he says, um, am I not supposed to listen to the news? This is the news from BBC. And I'm like, no, that's my voice. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that was, so I was very, very, um, you know, uh, fascinated by the voice and radio and stuff. And I always wanted to, uh, you know, be ours. And even at one point of time, I have given, um, trial for the radio, uh, I created this, this, you know, idea of a program and I went to a local radio station saying that, Hey, this is my idea. And I want to become a RJ and, uh, and I had no formal training or whatever. And, uh, that was a new radio station opening up, but, uh, they never uh, selected me and never let me know why not. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that that did not happen uh, because I mean, I would have restricted, you know, to the small uh, location, the small set of audience, yeah. but now with a podcast, you can literally reach out to anyone in the world. Yeah. So, and then now, right before you started the inspiring talk podcast in 2017, what exactly were you doing? Were you, were you, uh, were you studying or what was your profession back then? Yeah. So I was working as a research scientist for a pharmaceutical company. Now, first year at my job, I was really, really excited. And I said, wow, this is, uh, this is uh, just uh, awesome. And one and a half years, I realized, damn, this is not something that I wanted to do with my life. I was winning all the races. I was getting all these accolades and accomplishments. But unfortunately, this is not what I want to do in my life. And when that frustration started happening, 
that's when, uh, you know, that's a, you know, the whole story. That's when, you know, I started, um, you know, figuring out what is it that I want to do next in my life. And I had no other skill in becoming a research scientist. So, and then, you know, that's how I got into podcasting where I said, okay, I don't know what I want to do in my life, but I would like to first probably learn from people and ask them, hey, how did you figure out what you wanted to do in your life? How did you figure out you wanted to start a company? How did you figure out that you wanted to write a book? Or how did you figure out you wanted to climb Mount Everest, right? So all sort of people. And when I had that question, maybe, just maybe by interviewing these people, I would find my own blueprint for the success. So, and I started writing, you know, email and started getting people on the podcast and I started interviewing them and I started learning a lot from them. So I think that uh, that's a kind of a kind of a journey for me um, where, you know, uh, the, the entire journey and how I got into podcasting and what I was doing before I started the inspiring talk. Right. Wow. And Bizay, um, uh, we have we have been quite following you for at least a year and we have seen you, you know, um, hosting uh, uh, podcast workshops uh, even uh, in Nepal, yeah. which was organized by, uh, you know, uh, one of the famous podcasters in Nepal, Savina, which was also organized by American Embassy in Nepal. Now, uh, tell me, is podcasting a full time career right now? Yes, for me, it's uh, it's full time now. Um, you know, I do podcasts. I do another podcast as well. It's called Podcast Unfiltered. That's the show where I chat with fellow podcasters. Um, and also, um, you know, uh, I uh, do a bit of a podcast coaching and consulting uh, and train people on, uh, you know, starting podcasts, as you have mentioned. I conduct workshops and training online program and so on and so forth. Um, and also, uh, you know, we have started, as I mentioned in uh, my introduction, we have started a company called WYN Studio, which is which has got nothing to do with WNYC. Uh, <laughs> it's a WYN stands for What's Your Narrative? WYN. So we believe that every brand or every individual has the you know uh, the story and the narrative, um, you know, and the power within themselves. So the idea is to help them bring those narratives out to the world. So we. Uh, you know, produce podcasts for the brands, and we uh, also create our own original podcast as well. So that's uh, that's pretty much what my life revolves around. These three key areas. So one is doing my own podcast, teaching bit, uh, and conducting workshops and so on and so forth, and running uh, Wine Studio uh, along with my co-founder, where we uh, you know just uh, do some crazy stuff and uh, try and put some interesting shows out there. So yeah. Right. And BJ, um, uh, we recently had a news about uh, you know, Spotify, which is one of the uh, giant streaming audio uh, service uh, globally. Uh, they just had uh, uh, Joe Rogan, 100 million deal to be, over yeah, over 100 million deal to be exclusively on Spotify, uh, which is a great, great news for podcasters like us. But is, is, is that really happening in South Asian countries like Nepal, India, Bangladesh? Uh, is, it, is it real to imagine those kind of success? I think um, the, the interesting thing to see here is that happened after like Joey Rogan putting work day in and out for 15 years, right? So um, uh, uh, the podcast in, you know, um, in India and, uh, you know, even Nepal, Nepal is like way, uh, you know, behind where we are in, uh, you know, at least in India right now, because Spotify is investing a lot here in India as well in getting new shows. Um, Amazon Audible has launched a specific app only for India for podcasting, it's called Audible Suno. So, um, so Audible Suno is an app from Amazon, uh, which they don't, it's, it's a podcast app, uh, just like Spotify, but they have only original shows uh, where they have got the likes of Amitabh Bachchan to do podcast for them. So that's, uh, that's there. And also the local uh, or, the, or the Indian podcast, uh, Indian music streaming platforms like Geo Savan and Ghana, um, and a lot of other music streaming platforms are also now getting into podcasting. Uh, I don't think we are there yet, even for the 1 million deal to happen in podcasting. We have a long way to go. But, uh, but the way the podcast has grown in the last three years, right? So when I started in 2017, I have never imagined the podcast would grow so fast. And, you know, we would have so many people investing in podcasting as a medium in India at this pace, which is a very, very good sign that the medium is growing and it's getting a lot of attention. So, um, 
So yes, I think we will be there, but it's it's just a matter of time. Maybe you know I don't know how uh, long it's gonna take for us to reach to the level where where podcast is gonna be mainstream. Because uh, once that happens, I can um, you know definitely say that podcast is gonna be like the biggest in the entire world here in India. The reason for that is obviously the population that India has got, right? So uh, it's already like $6 billion industry in China. People are creating courses on audio and people are taking courses on audio and it's like $6 billion industry already in China. So in India, when that adaptation from a lot of people who are yet to know what the heck a podcast is and when that happens and when a lot of people start listening to podcasts and, um, and that happens by a lot of regional content that's uh, happening in India right now. There are a lot of podcast platforms uh, which specifically focus on regional languages on the podcast in Hindi, Tamil, Marathi, Punjabi, you know, Telugu, and so on and so forth. So when this kind of content uh, you know, serves the larger mass, when that, it, it serves a lot of people on the tier two, three cities of India. Now look at the way you know, TikTok is here, and I'm not sure if you guys know, uh, the way TikTok has like exploded in India because that app is available in I think eight to 10 different languages in India. So if somebody is, you know, don't even know how to, you know, uh, do anything else on the phone, like TikTok is in their native language. So you, they can browse, uh, you know, TikTok on, uh, you know, Hindi or Punjabi or Tamil or Telugu or whatever, right? So there are, I think eight to 10 languages, the entire interface of the TikTok is there. And then people are there. Um, and Similar thing is, I think, going to happen with podcast because now technology bring down the, uh, you know, entry barrier when it comes to creating the podcast, like with the anchors of the world. Now, it's super simple for you to, you know, start a podcast. And uh, with the uh, local language content, I think we are going to see the explosive growth of podcast uh, in the next few years. But it right now, um, I think we are in, uh, let's say, uh, you know, in the, the, just the beginning of, uh, you know, the podcast era in the US, I won't say we are still at the 2014 when the serial happened, that is yet to happen here in India. So that once that happens, you know, um, we are yet to have the serial in India or even, you know, for that matter, in any, any South Asian country for that matter. So when that happens, I think, uh, you know, the medium will pick up and it need not necessarily be a true crime. It could be anything that, you know, everybody want to, you know, go and check the medium out and listen to uh, the podcast. So, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm so happy for the kind, the way the, you know, uh, medium has grown in the past few years as I've given some examples of the way uh, all these mediums are getting into and, uh, uh, and also where it is headed from, because I get to interact with a lot of these platforms, um, you know, in India, and it's really, really exciting. Um, and just a slight change in the topic. <laughs> sure. I, 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 I personally, am really interested to know from your personal experience um, and from your professional experience in this sector, what have you gained and what have you lost pursuing podcasting as a career? Obviously, I asked the same question, at least the first part, but I haven't really thought about the second part of the question that you asked. Uh, so, um, so I think the biggest thing that uh, you know, I have gained is a lot of friends and like a network, right? Uh, and you guys understand this, right? Coming from one country and moving to another and knowing no one in that country. It's such a pain, right? And even though I, you know, am here for last eight to nine years, for the first six years of, you know, my entire career here was just, you know, my friends in the college and then my colleagues at my organization. And I had barely had any network outside my uh, you know, my own professional, whatever setup, right? So that network was something that I was hugely missing. And when I started doing this podcast, now when you do podcast one, you get to meet a lot of interesting people every single week. You are sharing the mic with, you know, these very, very interesting people with very, very interesting stories and doing really cool things. So and that way your network expands like anything. And you know, you build that, you are essentially building that trust by getting that person on your show, right? It's nothing, but you are just building that trust. And when that happens, your network expands. So I think um, getting really, really interesting people on the show and 
you know, becoming friends with them and expanding my network, I would say, is the gain that I probably, uh, you know, had the biggest gain, I would like to say, uh, because I podcast. Uh, which otherwise would have never been possible. And when you have that kind of network, a lot of opportunity for you opens up because now then you can say, hey, I, you know, um, now that you have built that trust with the person, then you, if you have some ideas to, of collaboration with that person, it becomes much easier for you to go to that person with that collaboration idea rather than just sending that cold email saying that I would like to explore this idea of collaboration. After you interview that person on your show, uh, and that way, you know, I have opened a lot of uh, doors of the collaboration with a lot of interesting people just because I podcast, just because I had them on my show as a guest. Now they trust me more than what they used to uh, or, you know, um, before I interviewed them. And then because of that, a lot of collaboration opportunities opens up. So that's like a huge, huge, huge gain, which I ask people to, you know, consider if they are doing podcasts. A lot of people here I'd like to highlight make mistake when they do podcast is they interview the guest and then done. They never reach out to the guest and build that relationship with the guest and keep that communication loop open, which is a huge, huge mistake because it's really difficult to get people on your show. So once you have done that, once you have, you know, uh, broken that ice by getting them on your show, you have already, uh, you know, you have already taken care of the difficult part, which is to get them on the show. Now it's much easier for you to keep that communication going on and keep that conversation going on so that then potentially you can collaborate in one or the other project in the future. So I'm thinking about what would be the, what have I lost of being into podcasting? I think, I mean, I really can't think about that because uh, I mean, I love this uh, medium so much and uh, all I have, uh, you know, gotten from this. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Maybe, um, I don't know, I don't think it's, uh, I think this is a loss, but uh, my dad would think this is a huge loss. So maybe I would want to talk about that. So I don't think that. So when I was working at, you know, at the job and like every other Nepalese parent, my dad wanted to go to the US for my master's and I had taken TOEFL and did really well. And I was um, in 2017 and I was preparing for GRE. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I had to go to the U S for my master's in, uh, you know, um, pharmacy. Okay. And that's the last thing that I wanted to do because I, the frustration at my job was increasing every single day. Okay. And then here, when I would go to the, you know, events, when I would do some of the, uh, you know, be part of some of the trainings and so on and so forth on the personal transformation and inspiration bit, I would get like really, really, really excited. And, uh, and, you know, it was a constant pull between saying that, oh, because my parents want me to go to US, I would come back and, you know, start preparing for GRE. And then when I would go there and why am I even doing the GRE? Right? I mean, I think I could do this. I, I can have a conversation with people and you know, really inspire people. And, uh, and you know, um, and uh, one day I like packed all my GRE book and everything on, on, on one bag and I threw it in the corner and I said, you know what? Just give me one year. I'm not, I'm not going to like focus on two things because I'm not able to do either. So I just want to put my entire focus on this one thing. I want to create podcast. I want to talk to people. Um, and, you know, uh, let me see. I mean, I want to experiment this for one year. And if you think that, you know, it's, it's happening or if, it, if I'm getting something in return, then totally fine. If not, then I will do whatever you say for the rest of my life. So I, I wish it was um, that easy conversation with my dad, it was uh, not that easy, but, uh, you know, I just got myself one year saying that, okay, just give me one year of my life. And after that, it's yours. So, um, and, uh, with a bit of, a uh, you know, a bit of, uh, you know, verbal fight we had, <laughs> he kind of said, okay, do whatever you like, you want to do. And after one year, uh, he still sometimes say you should have gone to the US, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, I don't uh, see that as a l loss or um, yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I really can't think of anything else than, you know, that one bit uh, mm. where my dad still, uh, you know, think that I would have been in much better position if I was in the US. So yeah. finally, towards the end of the podcast today, what would be your um, your key message to the, to all the aspiring podcasters? Start, just start. I mean, a lot of uh, you know, um, 
take a lot of time thinking and evaluating and you know as they say um, you know before if if you take longer to take that jump on a swimming pool right saying that okay let me see how deep it is okay would i be able to even swim or not so when that happens you never take that plunge and you never jump because you are constantly evaluating and you know what you are in essence doing is just putting a lot of fears on your head right so do i have a good voice would people want to you know listen to me uh you know i don't have a voice like that rj or i don't have this and you try and find all these excuses and i love this one of my you know podcast guests uh on the interview said uh, you know what bj the first thought that we have is usually the right thought after that the second third fourth thought is the thought that will essentially in essence those thoughts are the thought that will kill your first thought so just to give you an example the first thought let's say you might have is hey i want to start a podcast right and if you just get into the action as soon as possible then you know you are going to go and make it but the second and third thought uh i don't think it's technically easy that's the second thought which is going to kill your first thought right and the third thought is going to be i don't think i have like a great voice though that's the third thought that's going to again kill your first thought that you had first idea that you had and then the fourth one is uh i don't think uh, you know this is a really good plan dog for me or medium for me that's again killing your first so i think the idea is to just act on the first idea or the thoughts you have and just go ahead and start it you don't need to be perfect in any ways there are not like million of people waiting to listen to your podcast you can you know afford to fail on the first few episodes you can afford to make mistakes even if you uh, don't have the best uh, you know microphone or whatever now technology makes it easier for you to do podcast so i think uh don't think too much just get into it and once you get into it i can promise you a lot of fun how do you make money from podcasts <laughs> i know you you have been asked these questions so, so many times <laughs> every time every single time so um so my answer to this is hey if you are looking at making money then there are better ways than doing a podcast because i mean um it's just really hard to make money from the podcast that's like the simplest answer but uh you know the way i look at monetization and podcasting is something that i mentioned even when you asked about the guest on the podcast right so which is if you build that trust to the guest and if you keep that communication open with your guest what you are trying to do is you are uh you know constantly keeping that loop open and i'm i'm a huge believer of the collaborations that are possible with these guests because the people that you interview on your podcast are you know way ahead of you maybe you know they might be two steps ahead of you some of them might be 10 steps ahead of you and they are on your show because they want to help people they want to reach out to more people once you get them on your show and if i mean that network will open up a lot for you right so what we mean by that is you can collab so uh, I'll, i'll just give you give you an example okay So I interviewed this gentleman uh, called Chetan Mahajan and Chetan runs this beautiful place in the Himalayan called Himalayan Writing Retreat so it's a beautiful beautiful place near a uh, place called Nainital in India beautiful place with a scenic view where people from across the world from US and UK and all part of the world come at his place for writing workshops and writing retreats and i interviewed chetan because he had a really interesting story i built a trust with chetan and i was thinking of being something like that a uh, uh, training like that in the himalayas taking people in the himalayas and teach them podcasting now that i have built that trust to chetan and it was easier for me to uh, you know reach out to chetan after my interview building that trust and i said chetan you do this amazing you know retreats writing retreats at your place I think it would be interesting if we can pull together a podcasting retreat where you know I'll take people in the Himalayas for 3 days and you know teach them podcasting and then he kind of liked that idea and now he already trust me uh you know uh, the way he would say yes is um I mean the likelihood that he would say yes is way higher than you know some random guy reaching out to him saying that let's do a podcast retreat at your place right so that trust it happens and and i do that all the time with a lot of my guests where i reach out to them and i tell them hey you know what thank you so much for being on the show and then i keep that conversation going on and i figure out hey what is possibly i can collaborate with the guest so when you do that your influence and authority increases because now you are associating your name with the guest that you have interviewed on a podcast and that shoots up your credibility and your uh you know you know um influence so that's that's one which is like a collaborate with people 
whom you interview on a podcast, like it opens a massive, massive doors. Like I found the investor for wine studio, which is my company, uh, because he was a guest of my podcast. He said, Hey, what's, what's, what, are, what are you up to? And I said, uh, you know, I'm thinking of building this company, um, uh, you know, where we are looking at working with the brands and create content and podcasts and so on and so forth. He liked the idea and he said, are you open for investment? And that was like, you know, I was not even looking for investment or I had no freaking idea. It, it was just idea on my head. And here is somebody who is willing to put money on your idea. Why? Because the guy trusts you because you have interviewed him and build that, uh, you know, connection with you. Now he's an investor at my company uh, who seed funded the, uh, you know, the company that I run right now. Right. So, I mean, now, uh, there's a, you can say, oh, but that's still not the money that you made from podcasts. Right. But I love, uh, you know, one of the uh, podcasters in US who is a friend of mine as well. Um, uh, you know, um, he says, Deepak Sayaraman, he says, you know what? It's not, you know, you make, there are two ways to look at it, right? You make money from podcast or you make, you make money because of the podcast. So I'm more believer of making money because of podcast. So what do, we, what do I mean by making money from podcast is like making money from advertisement, making money from, let's say, listeners donations or making money from, uh, you know, affiliate or so on and so forth. But what do I mean by making money because of podcast, which means because you have a podcast, a lot of opportunities open up for you and, uh, with which you can, you know, you end up making a, a lot of money because a lot of these different ideas, like one is one of those is like collaboration with your guests. So another would be creating your own product and service, which you can sell to your listeners. That could be if your podcast is on, let's say for you guys, your podcast is on, you know, how to adjust in, you know, as, as a outsider in the US, right? So what are the things that you should navigate? So maybe that could be a training program or that could be online course, or that could be a book, uh, whatever that is. And you can, you know, uh, put it out there on your podcast saying that, Hey guys, we have this course or whatever. Um, if you guys are interested in that, you can uh, get, I don't intend to have advertiser on my podcast ever. So I would rather create it, create my own product and service and, uh, you know, push it out to my listeners because they will find more value than, uh, you know, playing advertisement of Casper mattress. <laughs> <laughs> you make Casper mattress angry now. <laughs> you, you give them a free publicity. Come on. <laughs> anyway, it does. So no, anyways, they anyway the podcast listeners are listening to Casper mattress and every other podcast. Yes. I don't know if is that the case now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now your your ad on of the Casper mattress. I'm just now, you know, thinking if uh, Casper mattress were to uh, is, is sponsor at the oh, end of the time. day, uh, at the end at the end of the day, then you guys are like, guys, at the end of the day, you need to sleep. And here's the Casper mattress. <laughs> <laughs> it's really soft mattress, you know. You yeah. love it. You'll dream well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amidst this pandemic, you'll dream really good. <laughs> yeah. You guys should reach out to. You guys should reach out to Casper Mattress. You say, right, right, hey right. guys, when does people use Casper Mattress? And they would come back saying, at the end of the day. At the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart. Oh Very God. smart. <laughs> but thank you so much for all that you just shared, which is extremely helpful and very eye-opening, not just to the aspiring podcasters, but to everyone, to, yeah. to all the podcasters. Very practical, very, very helpful information. No, thank you so much for having me. I really, you know, enjoyed having this conversation and I'm a huge admirer of the hustle that you guys are putting in and I keep seeing your posts and, uh, <laughs> uh, and I know how hard it is to put the audio show and you guys do video on top of that. And I can imagine how much of that work is on top of the full-time job that you guys have. Right. Um, so thank you for doing what you are doing and it's, it's a, uh, you know, incredible job that you guys are doing and congratulations for all the accolades and rewards and the awards that you guys have been able to <laughs> get for your own show. Uh, keep up the great work and thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. And to our audience, if this is the first time you ever heard of the Inspiring Talk, please make sure to subscribe and share the Inspiring Talk podcast. And feel free to reach out to Bizet through his website. Yes. Which is? Yeah, it's uh, theinspiringtalk.com or bjspeaks.com. There are the two websites. So whichever, it's, I think the most easiest way is to reach out to me on social media. At the rate, BJ speaks. Right. Uh, you heard it. BJ really speaks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So on that note, it's time to wrap up. And please keep listening to our podcast. Uh, please keep sharing the podcast. And if you want to take a look at the uh, earlier episodes of the podcast, log on to www.podcastattheendoftheday.com. And please make sure you subscribe our podcast on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, 
whichever platform you love. Yes, take care, stay safe guys. Hello, I'm Ian Hull from the U.S. Census Bureau. Beginning on March 12th, everyone in the country will be invited to respond to the 2020 Census. You'll have the ability to respond to the Census over the phone, online, or using a paper form. It is incredibly important that everyone is counted. Make sure you, your family members, and your neighbors are counted in this critical Census. We only get one chance every 10 years uh, to conduct the census. This is your chance to be counted.